we have a vector v, right? And let's say our vector v is in, in a component form, which would be vector v, v1, comma, v2. All right, so there's our little nice little vector v. All right, now let's say that vector v, though, let's say vector v does not have, has like some magnitude of 10 or something like that, whatever. Uh, one of the things, if you guys remember when we were dealing with like the unit circle, we noticed that we called this, you know, the unit circle because our radius was always exactly going to be, the radius of the circle was always one, right? And whenever we were dealing with angles, that was very, very helpful for us to know, especially when we got into triangles, it was very helpful for us to know that our hypotenuse was always, you know, exactly equal to one. Well, in vectors, a lot of operations are going to be very, very easy and helpful for us if we know their magnitude is going to be one. The direction we know is going to change. And obviously, when we talk about directional, angle, directional angles and vectors, that the magnitude is going to be affected, right? You have to find, you have to use the direction or the distance formula to find the magnitude. So one way that we can help that out is finding what we call the unit vector. So if I have an angle v, our unit vector, which we'll denote as u, is simply going to be our vector v divided by the magnitude of v. Now remember, we know how to find the magnitude of v, right? The magnitude of v, in this case, I'm going to simplify this because now we, have, we know what component form is, right? We know what the component vectors are. So now we could say this is going to be v1 squared plus v2 squared, right? Since we have a vector in component form, we could say it's the square root of v1 squared plus v2 squared. So that's going to be your uh, magnitude. Well, and then remember v, v represents, oops, v represents two coordinate points of v1 times v2. So if you take those unit vectors and divide them by the magnitude, that's going to provide you with a unit vector. And a unit vector always has a magnitude of 1. All right. So a lot of times we just like to write this like this. All right, and we'll go through some examples when we actually are given a vector and how that was going to how that would look. Okay, but all for one, I want to let you guys know is the unit vector has a magnitude of one, and all we simply do is take the component form of the vector and then divide it by its magnitude to find the unit vector. All right, but there's two other unit vectors that are very, 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 very important that we're going to get to.